All right. Um, yeah, so you can um, tape your papers usually and then also make it wet. That's how I did those bees. Yeah. Uh, this time I will just try because I remember it was working also that um, once you make it wet and then put the tape, then uh, when it kind of dries, it becomes more stretchy because the tape is kind of, yeah. So I'm taking just now um, a bit bigger brush just uh, for, um, yeah, more, more kind of quickly comfortable and just clean water. And I just um, make my paper wet. Yeah. And then, of course, it's good if you use watercolor paper, yeah, that is more, uh, more thick. And it means it's, uh, it, will, it won't become so curvy. Yeah. We, imagine like the paper from, from printer. Yeah. You put water, it all becomes very thick. Yeah. yeah. And also, why uh, can we paint without making paper wet uh, with watercolor? And of course, we can. And one can also, for example, experiment. Uh, you put uh, watercolor uh, on, on dry paper and then on wet. And what is the difference? Is that on wet paper, of course, watercolor, um, it's easier for it to, yeah, to expand. And it is not leaving uh, those borders, yeah. That one one usually tries to then kind of uh, with water take them away because it already and then it becomes kind of a bit more fluffy your your paint, yeah. It's just spreading out nicely. Okay, I put some water. Sometimes there is also technique that you put water from both sides, you kind of make it wet. Turn the paper, make it wet again. Yeah, and it's called like um, like wet on wet, like different. Um, it's also, it really depends what you're planning to paint. Uh, also on, on maybe your experience. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make wet just one side. And yeah, so now I made paper, it became a bit um, curvy, yeah? Um, as it is a bit thicker, it's not curvy kind of in the middle, it's just like generally. And actually, the, this book was very nice. Uh, there is little text, but I was reading these comments uh, about the bees and yeah, explained very nicely what color uh, to use, how to mix it, how to put it. Yeah, so very nice guidance there. Yeah, so I, I put it, I can leave it a bit maybe to six. Yes, um, so let's let the water, uh, one can also use, for example, you know, these um, sprayers, like the one you use for you know, water or cleaning windows. This is also the, the people who paint a lot with watercolors, they kind of have it. And then when you need it, you kind of spray a bit and it also helps to contain paper wet. Yeah, because in generally painting in watercolors means having the surface, your paper wet. And they even say like paint quickly till it's wet. Once it's dry, like stop. Yeah, you can't can't continue. Yeah, so yeah, it's <laughs> what the colors. That's the way it is. It's uh, lots of experiments. And, uh, um, so um, I will. Uh, I think I won't do the pencil sketch this time. Yeah, but of course um, I don't want to put. Uh, I'll put here because I don't want to put it on, on the paper. Yeah, but uh, you can take 
pencil and just very lightly maybe just sketch the position, yeah, the composition. So let's say, yeah, this is our paper, yeah. And since we have three B, um, yeah, try to kind of place them. Also, for example, um, try to avoid the same distance between them. Yeah, when I did those, that's what kind of happened, and then I erase. And uh, yeah, so maybe these two a bit closer and this a bit more lower. And the B itself, it's literally not, yeah, um, not much. So let's say, okay, here is the body. Yeah, also maybe, okay, maybe it's too big for the paper. Yeah, so maybe can erase and do smaller. Yeah, but literally just very thin uh, thin with pencil because we all know watercolors are transparent yeah? and so we have three bees a bit different position yeah and still it's kind of what what we are aiming it's more feeling yeah, of a bee And we will have our paint yeah, blurred. So yeah, it's more just kind of sketching position and the size. Yeah, this is um, yeah. All right, I'll I'll do this also in my paper a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah, just kind kind of on the wet, of course, it's not. not. And the flowers, of course. Um, yeah, um, let's say you can you can plan maybe some main flowers, yeah, or it sometimes can help just imagine it in your head, yeah, or sometimes just kind of you move your pencil in, in the air. Let's say okay, somewhere here maybe. Yeah, so it's it means that your brain kind of remembers it. And yeah, but we don't too much pencil and the raising and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah so so basically well maybe it's because of course I already painted it once. Yeah, so to repeat, it's easier. Uh, um, yeah, but I kind of just put pencil in the air, just pointed myself, and you know. so then it's also good you have the reference, either the image uh, from the book from Darren, yeah, or or this is my painting, and then kind of you you follow the. Yeah, I feel my paper got got dry. Yeah, I'll try make it wet a bit more. Maybe also sometimes just um, locally. Yeah, some places. Let's say, okay, I know somewhere here will be the bees. I'm starting with the bees. Yes, maybe I can make also just some part wet. And I have um, I have three three brushes. So um, this shape of the brush is kind of typical for um, watercolors. Yeah, they can be a bit bigger. Also, this point sometimes it's even more extended. And yeah, so uh, this shape allows you kind of have watery, yeah, a lot of water and paint on it. But then still with the thin yeah, point you, you put, so it's kind of the shape, you, you have it charged with water and paint and then you, yeah. And then I have the one small that I use usually always with 
with acrylics, yeah, it's just small that allows any, any small details. And this one uh, I was experimenting, so it's very, if you can see, yeah, very kind of longer, yeah, spin that longer. And it's kind of, I found it very, very nice for exactly some, um, some thin lines. Yeah, so you kind of move it in the air and it allows you to create some long, yeah, for example, also when I did some water in watercolors, then all these tiny lines of, of sea or water was actually very nice. Yeah? So sometimes even with, with small brush, we try to create thin line and it becomes fat. Yeah? And this long one was kind of allowing yeah, to, to do that. Um, so we will start with, with these. Yeah, we will mix um, yellow. Um, then we will mix apart yeah, some, uh, some brownish. And then we can use also um, either black or paint gray yeah, for a darker part. And first, what we're going to do, yeah, so yeah, you can also touch a little bit. Yeah, so it's wet, it's wet. And we're going to be like sitting spots. Yes, and it will be just uh, watercolor spot. All these details, they come later. Yeah, we will leave it dry, go to flowers, and then come back and with a, with a small brush, I kind of make some accents on, on lines. Yeah, and on wings. Now it will be just kind of spots that when they dry, they kind of also fade out. Yeah, and that's why later we, we do the touch-ups with um, yeah, with more dry brush and thin brush. Yeah, it's kind of also typical technique in watercolor. Yeah, you, you put all this, um, yeah, all the color, all kind of, um, yeah, all, all blurred, extended, and then just add a detail. So let's, let's choose yellow. Yes, it can be uh, just the medium yellow. Yes, if you want, it can be uh, maybe a little bit sienna if you find this a bit too, too yellow. That's right. But uh, also, the, the best suggestion is to keep colors clean, especially, let's see, for example, this, this uh, part of flowers that I did. Yes, I used maybe one, two colors for flowers, and then the same, I did two, two types of green for, yeah. But I wasn't mixing them with brown, wasn't mixing them with black, because yeah, it all becomes then dirty. And the point of watercolor is exactly this transparency clean. Yeah. So I have here my yellow. Uh, we'll at once prepare some brown. So let's say either um, item bur burn burnt sienna. Yes, or if you find it like too light, yes, the brown can be also the um, burnt umber. Huh? Yes, but here I have. This and I can. And I will put a little bit of um, uh, paints gray. The, the book of, of Darren was all also suggesting paints gray. So you see, <laughs> I'm not the only one stick to this color. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll start with the with the yellow and just sitting um, where the body is. Yeah. So. Imagine somewhere here is my body. And now I already feel my paper again, talking so much, you got to dry. Because what the effect that I want to make is that when I put, uh, when I put the color, it is kind of, um, you can see the edges, um, they are kind of spreading out. Yeah, so here I put, now in this spot, it's kind of dry. So you can see it's kind of sitting 
Yeah, and let's experiment. So if I see it, yeah, if I see it there where it's bad, you see it's kind of spreading and the edges yeah, become so just few, so just three parts of the big body. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, but so and there is also a trick to control. So maybe, for example, here you could say, oh, it's really too much. Yeah, well, I can also maybe, uh, yeah, clean up a bit in watercolors. You can, yeah, correct by um, by collecting. Uh, yeah, with clean brush, you just take take the paint back. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> then with brownish, but not too much pigment, not too much color on, on brush itself. I just also sit yeah, for, for, for the wings. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it's okay if they, um, if it comes inside uh, yellow a bit, yeah, if, if it's maybe too much, yeah, and again, then with clean brush, you can, um, you can, you can correct in water, <clears throat> in watercolor, yeah? so just be quick and remember your brush to be, um, to be clean. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can try putting also a bit of black inside, but I would suggest to take smaller brush. Yes, to have um, not to have uh, too much black at, at this stage. Yes, so here, for example, I can. My wings got me a bit, bit too too watery. I can collect. Yeah? And it's kind of so I'm kind of not even spreading I'm just like putting dots yeah and and then the color because we made the paper red the color then is spreading. And then here, for example, I can I can do maybe some black tap tap. Yeah, with the, with the, yeah, but just a little bit maybe not too much. Yeah. What is also with watercolors that one has to repeat a lot, sometimes the same place again and again. And one says, but I already did it. I already put the shadow there, I put the color. Yeah? And since also watercolor yeah, has, has this thing of, of disappearing. Yeah, when, when, when it's dry, one is kind of, what happened? Yeah, well, nothing to do, then one uh, kind of repeat. Yeah. Yeah, and remember till till it's wet, you can you can go correcting. Yeah. Well, once it's dry, then it's just um Um, I mean, then you just kind of, if you want to correct it, you paint paint on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you feel, for example, now I have, yeah, I would can repeat maybe some brown a bit more again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, yeah, but for, for the wings, for example, try not to put too much because the wings still are there kind of transparent. So, uh, yeah, maybe in the start of the wings where the wings are touching the body, there we can put a bit more um, brown. Cause yeah, because it's kind of maybe the, the body showing through, but then the rest, mm -hmm. And then one can also come back with, with yellow, of course. Yeah, if, but all kind of all very, very gentle.
Yeah, it's also maybe a bit, yeah. So not not overdo too much. Yeah, maybe already myself and when you should should spot stop, leave it dry, and then just at at details afterwards. So this is also for um, for us. We 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 got used to acrylics, yeah. And then sometimes it's it's hard to to paint with watercolors because I find myself very often, yeah, just painting with very dry brush on a dry surface, and then uh, just becoming as a as acrylics. Yeah? But the idea of Water color is just let it flow, let uh, color, yeah, let the paint do its job. Yeah, the the only thing is just try to keep it clean. Yeah, and no worries if it now looks all too blurry, and you say, well, yeah, once it's dry, then we will add all these nice details that will make these yeah, more okay, I will I'll let my bees dry. Yeah, here with the with the clean brush, I kind of clean a little bit around. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you can see also a bit the difference. Yeah, these upper bees and this bee below. So here I had less water, and you can see, yeah, maybe it even looks now better a bit. So it's also a question of knowing, yeah, how much water um, to use, yeah, for for different purposes. So maybe it would be just something like misty mountains in the background, then a bit more water. Yeah? But okay, so, yeah, so, all right. The bees live, live in peace. Um, what's also suggested is to have kind of two buckets of water when, when painting with watercolors. I, I have only one, I didn't get, but meaning that it's important to have uh, clean water, yes? The one is where you kind of wash the brushes, and the, the clean water uh, is where you kind of fill fill up your brush. Yeah, and... mm -hmm. So now again, I add a little bit water to the part of, of flowers where the flowers are coming. Yeah, but now you already um, so tr try to feel yes how much water you are putting and what effect you are getting. Yes, and then with time you kind of already know. Yes. And what with flowers? So I suggest you like really choose. Yes, the best, the brightest, the nicest color you you have. Um, so for example, I was also shopping, so I have some colors that are not. In a typical set, um, the one is called Orange Lake. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but it's very nice, orangey. It might be something like India. Yeah, so here I have it. So I will prepare this the one orange, let's say, and one yellow. Yes, that can also. Uh, yeah, but but so just. Two colors. Don't don't mix it with. Um... So, have you been to the city? Take uh, your paints. Say again. If, uh... Did you go to the city to get your paints? Did you take a drive? Yeah. Um, no, actually, I. Um, so the last Saturday it was the plan to travel, and then to due to COVID, it's uh, yeah, it all got cancelled and. 
Yeah, so it wasn't. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, well, it's okay. Uh, but I'm honestly looking forward. Uh, I'm planning to go to back, back home to Europe. So I'm kind of, <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, when, when are you thinking about doing that? Probably um, end of February, maybe <gasps> start of March. Yeah, I'm also already kind of, of course, I've already been home, see my mom. Yeah. yeah so it's, so do your world are good. Yeah. And then, of course, I plan to do some, some trips. Well, depending how of course COVID stuff going. Um, yeah, but definitely also maybe south of England, since my aunt, well, actually I have two aunts area in Wagner. So then you guys, you bet having me around. <laughs> yeah, we just yeah, have to go definitely. on site, won't we, somewhere? That, that, that could be good, that could be good. <laughs> Wouldn't it yeah, be amazing? That's, that's my plan to be back in, in Europe now and do maybe when it's spring, to do a lot of outside painting. Yeah. Oh yeah. I actually getting prepared. I bought um, AliExpress lots of this stuff for outdoor painting. So trying to arrange my I set. That's a really good idea. I tried to do some sketching on the pier yesterday, but it was so cold I couldn't feel my hands after about half an hour. <laughs> I thought, yeah, maybe it's not the time yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was desperate to do it. Like the sun was out. I was like, yeah. And then the sun went in. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, painting outside mm. has a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, it's, it's, mm. But it's at the same time, it's so exciting. If the painting also goes well, it's really exciting. But of course, it's easy that the painting is not <laughs> going well. So. No, that's a good point. Okay, talking too much. So, to my, my, I got wet again a bit. Why? Because again, I wanted flowers to flow. Yes, and I just take like pure, let's say here, it is my pure orange. Yeah, and, and here, and I, I, I let it flow. Maybe I can also quickly clean my brush and add a bit more water so it flows a bit more. Yeah, and I can also add another till it's wet kind of yeah, drop another color in, inside. And again, don't worry if it looks too, uh, too bright at the moment. Yeah, watercolors, they always fade, fade out. Yeah? And then again, we, we put these spots and when it's dry, then we can add um, a bit more contour, yeah, and a bit more, uh, Yeah, so now it's yeah. So of course, uh, in in watercolor is actually a bit uh, much more planning uh, is going on. Um, so uh, when when you paint, yes, one thing another. Yes, and in some parts you can see kind of a bit more intense color, yeah, and then have it have it blurred, yeah. But it's also kind of then you you create yeah, not not just even color spots, but they are a bit different. Yes, and then of course if something yeah, exactly again. So because. We made I made the paper wet, it, it became curvy. And so and of course, yeah, the paint tends to kind of sit in in, in the yeah, I, I actually use um pa uh, paper towel and uh, just yeah, take some can take some off if too much, I yeah, would say. Mm -hmm. 
So also leave, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, leave some place for, for some greens. Yeah, so not... Yes, and now I will wait till this, my orange yellow is dry. Yeah, before coming in with, with green, because I don't want them to mix. Yeah. Yeah, so and also try to feel yeah how it is when you see the paint and your paper is already dry. That is also in generally not suggested, but it's hard, it's hard to stop sometimes also because they just tend to you know. um after the orange, um one can go to do the sky. Um, but it's also, yeah, if you see the Darren's book, they, they have no blue, no sky, so one can also just, uh, yeah, leave the paper white, it's, um, it's all right. Um, or if, if you want, yeah, then of course, uh, do some blue. I have also bought this, some extra yeah, different blue, so I have, I have some, this kind of very light, yeah, uh, one is called the mint color, and it has already white color inside. Yes, so um, when I paint, it's really light. Uh, and, um, yeah, one also very nice color. I can't really find it, but uh, when I see some online lessons, they use it a lot. It's lavender. And it's also purple and it already has white pigment inside. And so you kind of use it a lot for some background. Yeah, and it's kind of purpley. Sounds interesting. Pink. Yeah. So it's um yeah, and then for um for the background, again, I will I will put some a bit more wet, yeah, because I want it just to flow and fade out. Yes, uh, and now, of course, for example, I can see since my water is not clean. Yes, I can see. Yeah, but okay, nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I can with the same big brush. I'll just put maybe some, uh, yeah, some, some blue. So it's just. Yeah, it also doesn't have to be very, let's say, even. Yeah, maybe corners you can leave white as well and have this blue. Yeah, but it's very, very light. So, for example, I put this and then I spread it out as well. It's more just kind of, mm -hmm. but as I said, you can also have your, leave your paper white and yeah, then have a bit more green grass maybe uh, behind the bees. Yeah, let's see as well. Yeah, so in watercolors, it's also, uh, they use a lot uh, hair dryer. Yes, because um, there is really these, all this combination in wet and then way to dry. And then continue. So then, uh, it's very common for them to have a, a hair dryer next to the working space. Mm -hmm. And then maybe here I have some kind of a bit bigger blue spots. Yeah, one can maybe maybe where are the wings? Yeah, I can mark a bit more bluish. And it's like also just maybe leaving accents of. Now let's say like as if the. Um, Uh, the movement, yeah, of maybe of, of wings. So, or just. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I imagine you can hardly see this blue that I have on paper. Yes, and I, I don't want to make it too bluish. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, you can see the blue. Well, I see quite well. well. Yeah, it's um, it's also the green. Yeah, because I have kind of also very light in here. So, I mean, I myself can barely see it. So <laughs> with the can. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so what can one can see if how it's with with your orange? It's uh, actually not before going for the green. We can come back to our bees. Because these are dry, should be dry already. And uh, this is the moment when, when kind of the, the magic, or, or or at least I enjoy this moment most. Because once you put all these details, the painting kind of turns on. Aha! Uh -huh, so this that's what <laughs> it should be. Yeah. So I take a um, small, yeah, this small brush, and I take. So I don't I don't have it watery, I have it more dry, and then take paints gray. And then I just start doing uh, details for uh, for the B. So let's say I can mark more the head, I can mark under the wing, yeah, and maybe some few lines where the wing is, there's also the mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's kind of putting some some little lines. Yeah, so maybe also not only uh, black. For example, I can clean my brush and I can go for uh, back to brown, and I can make a little bit of contour on my wing, so then they're more a bit more vi visible. Yeah, but then again, not. Putting one strict line, it's more very uh, interrupted line. Yeah? So just mm -hmm. yes, and then again. So I come back to this this spot of the bee that I have, and just kind of make it more precise. Yeah, but still we keep we keep those transparent parts that that we have created. Yeah, and also if maybe too much, then you can uh, kind of blur out a bit with, um, with the water again. Okay, here one B. I have a huge one. <laughs> okay, let's imagine it. Yeah. So, and and for example, yeah, all the legs of the B. Just make kind of an accent. Yeah. Of course, you don't try to create, yeah, but just some. Yeah, so I put a bit more dark where the head is, and then um, under the wings where the, the body is, so kind of wings are leaving a bit more shadow, there I also put a bit more black, and then maybe spread out with water, with the same black that I put, I spread it out so it's a bit more gray over the body, and then I take brown and do some lines with brown on the wings. Yeah? So not make wings too. 
too dark. Yeah, and also it's, for example, yeah, I fill in my brush with, um, but still I can sometimes even can take off a bit more water, yeah? So it, it, the paint stays, but then it's not too watery, then it's also, Yeah, and then again, you can leave it dry and then come back again for other details one month later. But um, yeah, the same rule, uh, overdoing, yeah, especially in, in, in watercolor is, 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 you can even see it sometimes, yeah, you can see the work of others and you can see that some spot, the person was fighting and kind of, uh, so. Here I put a bit more bright yellow to the body as well. Yes, it's still kind of a little bit more. Yeah, also for example, behind the wings, I can also put a bit more black where the body is. Yeah, so it also creates a feeling the end of wings are transparent. But the start of the wings are a bit black. Yes, and then it's kind of you can see a bit body maybe there. Yeah, but still it's all all feeling and uh, yeah. Uh, with the green, again, I'm kind of using uh, all those new that I was buying, and the one is called Olive Green. Very nice sunshine green color. And I will use this, and I will use uh, one maybe a bit darker, yeah, or later, but I will start with this green. Um, so I advise you also to pick some uh, kind of beautiful green color. Yeah. And in this case, maybe I won't do much. I will not. I will not water my paper anymore. Yeah, but I will start with my brush wet, and do again first all kind of this blurry green part, and then afterwards on top, yeah, with thin brush, more precise green touches. Yeah. So again, first we kind of blur in. But now, of course, already a bit more plant, meaning, yeah, with, with flowers, we kind of, yes, we plant a bit the flowers, but still it's all more like free spot. Now still I, yeah, I plant these, these leaves, yeah. But of course I can put more green on the bottom and, and then on top. And what I will I'll do, I also kind of, I hold my brush almost in the end. And then I do kind of this movement up. So I can I can start somewhere here in the bottom. And then it just, yeah, so it's more like doing some free free movement, yeah. Or also going from up to down as well and just leaving maybe some. Yeah. And now again, it's maybe a bit too dry of my brush, and I can. Be spread out. So now it's a bit more feeling maybe some empty spot where the white paper is left, but it doesn't have to be that we cover all all white. Yeah, it's yeah, and again, if you put some some line. And, and it feels a bit too much, then you quickly clean your brush and then kind of go with the, um, with the clean wet brush on top and like this you. 
And then I think, yes, yeah, so where my, my flowers is, I can put, yes, this bottom, so this green bottom part. Yes, and it can be again now a bit more and kind of watery if that, and then later it can be a bit more precise. Yeah, and feel free to interrupt yeah, your green parts. So it doesn't mean that if you started it somewhere, it has to go to the end of page. No, it's even better if it's more you know, all kind of. Later, one should also come back and do maybe a bit touch-ups with the um, with the orange, yeah, inside the flowers. Also, give them a bit more, like the same we, we did with bees, yeah. Give some details. Yeah, so maybe I can leave my green dry a bit till I come back there with the um, with green details, and then I go, I can go to flowers and give some details. Yeah. And again, maybe some inside part of flowers, also maybe the contour, yeah, contour also. Yeah, so if some some flowers turned out to be too too blurry, yeah, like one can kind of mark them a bit with them. Yeah, so you can make some flowers can make a bit more intense. Some flowers you can leave um, yeah, faded out. And it's also some, some parts of painting will make, make kind of the main and other you know, just And now I'll take a bit darker green. Can either also mix it with, with this light green, the first one I was using. Yes, and then also do this one. Yeah, but also 
maybe not not too much yeah you know? more like accents mm -hmm. Yes, and I feel that uh, watercolor paintings, they might be even like kind of quicker yeah, than the acrylics, exactly because kind of the moment where you have to stop uh, comes, comes sooner. Right? Mm. But at the same time with the watercolors, you might spend much more paper because you do something and it didn't work. And then yeah, you can't paint it over. Need to take. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can do also. So where where the bees are, also a few kind of. Yeah, jumpy lines of of grass, yeah, so it's not so empty. So, yeah, also, for example, lines can be crossing flowers for so the green lines. Yeah, don't be afraid to go over. It looks nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then of course you can never get two same paintings with watercolors. Yeah? Like with acrylics, we, we might. Yeah? But watercolors, yeah, they will always flow. And then it's it's so many factors. Yeah? So these um, online lessons that I, I watch, they also say, of course, if it's winter and then you have your heating in the apartment. And of course, it affects that your paper is drying much quicker. And it means that uh, they even say, saying, "Okay, I'm putting this, you know, this air uh, that makes air humid." Yeah, when when I paint, or I cover the the heater, uh, yeah, with with something. So it's kind of there are some. It's like the whole world of uh, exactly this connection of of wet paper uh, and Yes, for example, one, one bead that I have became smaller, but it's also, yeah, maybe it's more far away there uh, in flowers, and these two are closer with the bigger flowers. I 
I think when you let go with, with watercolors, it's really nice to paint. Yeah, it's, um, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I feel so stressful painting with watercolor. Yes, it's because exactly you want to control, oh, it's floating not, not where I want, oh, what it's doing. Yeah, and if you let it go, then then you you, you might start to feel like hmm. Yeah, but in the end, of course, everyone finds own uh, preferred material. And for example, I, I recently took oils again, and I got so used to acrylics that they dry quickly. And I was like, oh, what's going on with this? <laughs> with this medium, it was like, yeah. Yeah, so try also to feel the moment where to stop. That's not. You can put some accents also to the bottom of the flowers. Yeah, usually. And then the upper part of the flower is more transparent. All right, I will stop mine. Now, how it's looking, Darren? The bottom B, the left wing went a bit wonky just now when I tried to put the detail on it I think the paper was still a bit too wet there so uh, I've tried to sort of just try and hide that a tiny bit so uh, yes yes this is the, um, when you come back with thin brush for details it has to be dry yeah yeah otherwise it just uh, floats and then uh, that's the moment when kind of it gets a bit, a bit ruined but what you do, you just quickly take off what 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 you put, and then just wait yeah, till it's till it's dry. And um, and what also is um, advisable during uh, painting with watercolors is, of course, have your uh, paper yet yeah, to the the cardboard or something. And sometimes they even, for example, if I start my painting and I try to create some background, and sometimes I even, for example, can put some little objects under my um, yeah, cardboard, and then I have this angle, and then, yeah, the water is always floating the direction I want. Yeah? So, of course, I can also like take it and control it by, by moving, yeah, when it's mm -hmm. some maybe spot. But sometimes it's just you put, yeah, it can be also the other way. Maybe I want it all float back there. So I just put it. And yeah, so these also techniques uh, by moving the, yeah, the surface. Yeah, but nice. We, we can experiment, of course, more, yeah, with watercolors. I find it. How was your experience, though? I had I had a accident with the top, so I've cut that off, <laughs> <laughs> and I've put a, my B. I've got a different B at the bottom, so at the top now, because it just went bleh, like um um. Dan was saying about it not being quite dry, <laughs> so I've uh, I've got a different B at the bottom instead. <laughs> Cut it out excited, and... excited to see. Okay, maybe aha, uh -huh. something on my phone. So let's see, Darren. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, okay, the bottom two flowers 
yeah, they are a bit too like with sunglasses or let's say someone is sitting there watching. Yeah, so yeah. they're a bit too the same. And so if one would cover the other, yes, uh, so this is just a mm -hmm. position, uh, position story. Yeah. Um, all right, the bees, uh, for example, the upper one, you can compare, yeah, the yeah. wing looks nicer because the wings don't have much, yeah, the, the line, yes? Yeah. So it's kind of, yes, I, I was also doing contour, but trying just kind of to do like not one line, but a bit more uh, interrupted line, yeah? Maybe then, um, mm -hmm. it, like just comment. The flowers look like this upper part, yeah. yeah, very artistic, very cool. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of clean, nice color, let it flow. And and so you see again, yeah, it's that like here it looks very nice. These upper flowers of yours, they have this border. Yes. And, yeah. and um it looks very nice, but just someone knows when the paper is dry, then you get this border. Yes. Mm. And when the paper is wet, then you get, let's say, like yeah, the other borders um, yeah, more more faded out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's still but but very nice. Yeah, let's say um, in, in case uh, of Jules cut it to the top part. Yeah, if I would cover, let's say, these two flowers at the bottom. Yeah, looks uh, like or like leave these flowers, but but cut them maybe a bit. Yeah, so they're not too surrounded. Yeah, so. But this this um, right part of flowers is very artistic, yeah. But this is what happens. You you're a photographer <laughs> because it's like you've got a fading in the background. Down it looks, so it looks yeah. like you're going through a lens, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. This I'll is, send you mine. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. But this is typical also with watercolor uh, paintings that some parts you see and it's like really wow. Yeah, maybe it turned up by accident. Maybe it's because, yeah, you planned it hard. And, but it's like all the time, yeah? Some part is like, oh, you ruined it. And some part is really awesome. Yeah, you just you really want. Um, yeah, but but still, I think very, very nice. How how you feel yourself, Darren? The top part I'm quite happy with. Uh, like you say, the bottom flowers, when I was putting the paint down, they're looking okay, but as they've dried, not quite so good. But uh, <laughs> like I say, the, the, the top flowers with that sort of border, like the edge around it, sort of thing. Uh, I do like that effect it's got there. So uh, there's a flower just slightly below, which is fade in the photograph I sent to you. It's really faded uh, to almost nothing. So I've just put a bit more color in there just to see how that comes when it dries. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, overall, I'm not. Uh, I'm reasonably happy, shall we say. <laughs> <gasps> well, Darren, take a look at Jules. Well, my oh, second bee looks a bit squashed. <laughs> Jules, oh. you're such an artist. I am like... With Squished. The, with the white envy, like every time. Yeah, we paint every time you send the picture. And it's like, like how? Yeah, we paint one thing, she forgets. It's what's in my head, isn't it? You were saying about... <laughs> um, <laughs> You say about your brightest colour. So I just looked for, oh, that do. I've got a really bright red. <laughs> Chuck yeah. that on. But I say I think my I might go back over that B in the middle. I think it looks like it's been squished on the page. I, I like your <laughs> B. No, I wouldn't it, it depends. No. I, I can can be mm. tricky, yeah. I find them all good. Even the middle one is all of them very nice. They kind of all have a character or personality. Yeah. And the I'll tell you a true story, mm -hmm. right? This week, it was, I think it was Tuesday. So I'm in the corner here on a writing desk and I had my picture of a bee. Went over, there's only a queen bee sitting on it, a real queen bee. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. I was like, where's that come from? <laughs> Very odd. This is so like, oh, like a handsome bee there. Let me, yeah. let me come around. I was going to take a picture, but it looked really stressed. So I thought I'm going to get it out. So I just got it out really quickly. But I was like, where's that come from? We do have a log burner. I wonder if it was 
would. You know, they do, Possibly. don't they? Yeah. Yeah. You might have been on that. But thank you. Yeah, I just um, I struggled with that that B that's going like that. If it's going forwards, yeah. I was like, oh. No, very Is it well. maybe? Okay, the maybe only, it's the proportion. The only um, I will make is again this yeah. kind of the same distance between these um, green parts. You see, right. here is one, two, and three. So, yeah. Um, or put some something different exactly, in the middle. Maybe, maybe to you decide to which part. So yeah. Add maybe a few green lines, and then just break. Yeah, I'm doing it now. That is, I I I'm putting in some foliage. Also, all the time. And then I kind of on purpose, yeah, break it. I don't know what something happens with the brain that we tend to. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? To put the things in 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 order and. Uh, <laughs> we'll do that now. But lovely, you see how? Yeah, watercolors they they have this yeah lightness, happiness feeling, and yeah, and well, really see, fat. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with them though. I really didn't like them for a while. Well, a long time. I haven't been near them for years. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know why, but I just picked them up. I, I found some in the drawer, I think. And I was like, ooh, I'll have a go at this again. And now I'm addicted. You see, also, yeah, I think it's think taking uh, clean, bright colors. Yeah, like you did with flowers. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just put very nice clean color, don't mix it, and it will look. Yeah. Mm. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm making that squish B a bit bigger, as in length. I think he's a bit too. That's why, because his wings are really big and he's got his little tiny legs at the bottom. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his body a little bit longer so he's like not so squished. All right, as and you wish. That's what it is. To my opinion, mm. I like your bees as they are, and I find them um, all, all right. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy with that one. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy. It just looks a bit squished to me. Okay. Oh, I've got a bit of paper and squatted it. 